God on today is befitting. And I thank God for his word. It seems like lately I've been getting the word on the day that it's for me to preach it. And it's not that I'm not in the word throughout the week because I am. Hallelujah. Amen. But um, but sometimes we don't know why God do what he do. But we just have to be in agreement in what and, and what he does. Amen. Amen. And it seems like every step in our lives that he will have something for us. He will have instruction for us on what we should do, how we should do it. Amen. And if we follow his instruction to the letter in the spirit of the word, amen, we will be victorious. So on today, in the word of God, I'm going to ask that you turn with me to um, the book of Luke chapter 14. And we're going to start reading at verse 16. Yeah, we're going to start reading at verse 16. So Luke 14? Yes. We're going to read from 16 to 24. And I'm going to ask that you stand for the reading of the word of God. And we're going to read responsibly. When you study in one book and and then preach from another book, from another Bible, you find that sometimes the scriptures are um, arranged differently. If you find it, I'm going to ask that you stand so that we can move on. Those that has escaped to different parts of the um, house, we're in the sanctuary, bring yourself down, that you won't miss the word of God. We have praise and worship, but you don't want to miss the word. Amen? I'm going to read the first verse. I'm going to ask for you to read the second verse, and we'll continue to read responsibly, and we'll read verse 24 together. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. And sent his servant at summer time to say to them to, that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have brought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came, shewed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the hawk and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. And yet there is room. (laughs) And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that 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 none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my my supper. Amen. You may be seated. The word of God is blessed. Hallelujah. As I read the word of God, I must have read this passage this morning maybe ten times. And as I read it, the Holy Spirit will begin to show me different things. Amen. This is why the word of God says that we are to take his word and read it line upon line, precept upon precept. We're not supposed to peruse through the word of God really fast, amen, but we are to take our time, word upon word. The word of God says line upon line, precept upon precept. So as I read it, I began to reflect back on my own life. You know, the different banquets that I have been invited to. There were some banquets that I even crashed that they did not invite me to. Amen. Sometimes I don't wait for an invitation. Amen. Sometimes you will find that... Um, even within my personal life as I have walked alone in some things in my spiritual life, so do I still walk alone in some things. And there was banquets or parties, even retirement parties from 
those that was retiring from the job that I worked as a correction officer. All the time, I was not invited to these things, but there were some that I would just show up to if I liked the person that was retiring, and I would bring flowers, and I would sit there and partake in the festivities, and then I would pay my share, even though I wasn't invited. Amen? And there was one time when I got a look, and the brother said, you were something else. He said, the captain, he said, no one um, invited you, but you just show up. I said, that, yeah, that's right, because I happen to like the person that is being celebrated. So I really didn't need an invitation to come and celebrate the person that I like. I decided upon myself that I would come and partake in the festivities. And you will find that God sent Jesus into the world. And when he sent him, he sent them to the Jews, to the Hebrews. Amen. Amen. And he went about healing them and, and delivering them from their infirmities and from demonic spirits. But there were a few that were in the Gentile um, that was outside of the, of the Hebrew race, outside of the Hebrews and the Jews. And one was a woman and, and her child was sick and she came and she said to, to Jesus, she said, will you heal my child? And he says, no, why should I give unto the dogs what is for my children? Amen. Because the Gentiles was not the children of God, but but the Jews were. Yes, and she yes. said, well, even the dogs eat, eat, eat the crumbs from the table. Amen. So we find that she crashed the banquet. She yes. crashed that which was given unto the Jews. Amen. But she did so because she had a love for her child. And she knew that Jesus had what her child needed, she that she could. may be healed. Amen. Amen. So there's sometimes there's some parties that we must crash. Amen. Amen. But this banquet here, we find that what Jesus Christ had did at the cross, he died for the world. He shed his blood for the world. So you find that we, we, we don't have to crash his party. Amen. That we are all invited. He go go Shabbat. So the word of God says here, then said he also to him that bade him. No, we, excuse me, we have verse 16. This is a parable that is that Jesus is giving to the listeners. He said, then said he unto him, a certain man, he being Jesus, said this unto those that was listening, that a certain man made a great supper and bade many. The man that made the great supper is our father in heaven, amen, for he has prepared all of this for us. Amen. He has prepared the great supper. And then he sent his servant, his servant being Jesus Christ, at supper time to say to, to them that they were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. This was the message of John the Baptist, and it was the message of Jesus Christ. And this should also be the message of the church today, to come for what Jesus Christ has done at the cross, it is finished. Amen. All you have to do is have faith and believe in the work that Jesus Christ has done at the cross and partake in all the privileges that has been set forth for you and then it says here in verse 7 verse 18 and they all with one consent begin to make excuses I tell you the children of Israel they made excuses when they heard the voice of Jesus say follow me they did not follow and today the church they still make excuses I tell you the word of God says that the first said unto him I have brought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it it is Jesus Christ that has that gives us the provision to buy all that we buy everything that we have we have because he allowed it why at the time that he says come that you have to go and see about the land you mean to tell me that the land can't wait I tell you we need to get it together we need to set our house in order we need to set make sure that our the 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 the, the, the
And it says here that another, and we find here that, that him having a piece of land, there was nothing wrong with him having a piece of land. Hallelujah. There was nothing wrong with him having the piece of land, but we find here that the problem with, with this one here was that it, he was moving in self-will. I believe it was self-will. Hallelujah, just give me a minute. He go go, shabba ba Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. There was nothing wrong with him having the peace of land. Amen. But we cannot move in self-will. We cannot move in self-love. And we cannot move in self-righteousness. Amen. You will find that these things will keep us from God. And there was another that said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. And there was another that says, I have brought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee that you excuse me. Why do we take the things of the world, amen, and, and put them before Christ, amen? What is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his only soul? Hallelujah. But I tell you, God still have a plan because he said that his banquet hall will not be empty. God house will not be empty. It does not matter if those that he has come for will not receive for he says in his word in verse 21 he got angry hallelujah the word of God says that servant came and showed his lord these things then the master of the house being angry said to his servant go out quickly into the streets and into the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the hort and the blind so I looked up the heart, the heart said disabled in the feet or legs, crippled, game, lame. Amen. So he didn't send them out for those that were just physically blind, physically poor, and those that was physically maimed. Amen. He sent them out for those that were spiritually poor, spiritually maimed, and spiritually crippled, and spiritually blind. Why? Because you will find that your spiritual condition will depict your spiritual condition. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You will find that the word of God tells us that as our soul prosper, so shall our health prosper. Amen? So once you come in and you meet Jesus, amen, that he will change your spiritual and your physical condition. Amen? He's concerned about the whole man. Amen. And then you find that after the Lord had went out, and did what it is after the servant had went out and did what it is that the Lord had told him to do. The servant said, it is done. We must be obedient to the word of God. If those in the house won't come in and partake in what it is that God has set forth in his word, he says, go out and get those that are lame spiritually, those that are blind spiritually. Amen. Those that are crippled spiritually, that they may come in and partake. Get Amen. those that are in need of a physician. Amen. And let them come in that they may receive. For not only did Israel reject Christ, but so seems like the church wants to serve him the way that they want to serve him. They don't want to have strict adherence to the word of God. Jesus. We cannot be like that in this time. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out unto the, and then the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. You will find that as many that come, as many that come in to the house of God, that God will continue to pour out into them. There's always room. There is always room. Hallelujah. There is always room in the house of God for one more to come in, isn't it? There is always room. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out in the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be full. Amen. So after you have went out into the city, into the streets, into the lane, and you find that they have come in and they have received, right? And that there is still room left that they have received. He says, go out into all the world. Go out into the highways and the byways. And get those that are lame, those that are crippled, those that are blind there. And he said, bring them in to my house. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall 
taste of my supper. He says, none of those which have bidden to come into the house, into the banquet, and partake in the banquet of God and rejected it, then none of, none of them will taste of my supper. So those of us that have received, that has heard the word to come, and we have come, right? We can't stop there. Because once we hear the word of God that says come, come and take and sup and dine with me, what must we do? We must receive. We must believe. Hallelujah. We must apply it to our life. Amen. And we must go out and compel others the way we was compelled by those that came and brought the word to us. We must go out and compel others that they must come. Amen? He gives us a work to do. So those that have come into the house on today, will you receive him? Will you receive God? When Jesus went and he told Peter, Andrew, to follow me when they was fishing on a fishing boat. He didn't call them on their terms. They couldn't go out and get their life together before they came to Christ, to follow Christ. They had to give up all that they had, all that they knew. They had to give up even their, their way of life, their way of employment, to follow him. Amen. There are some today, and I speak to you even that will watch the video. There are some today that have a lifestyle in which they earn they living by selling drugs. Amen. They do all kinds of things. They make fast money, right? Some prostitution. Amen. And they say, well, if I come to Christ and I give up my way of life, my way of how I make my money, how will I eat? God is a provider. Amen. Amen. He makes a way out of no way. You don't have to exploit yourself to be provided for. He has a provision for every soul that accepts him. He has a supply. Amen. He has a supply. You can receive him and serve him and follow him on his terms. I remember reading in the word there was one man when he said, follow me. He says, let me go first and bury my father. Jesus told him to let the dead bury the dead. Let those who are spiritual dead that have no knowledge and has not counted up the course and don't know the value of what it is that they receive from following Jesus. Let the spiritual dead bury the natural dead. For we know that our spirit, for those of us that are in Christ, will never die again. We know that that spirit journeys on to be with God. Isn't that right? It will never die again. So why do we worry about these natural things? For him who died, his spirit will journey back to God. And on judgment day, he will either be in the lake of fire, hell fire with Satan, or he will be with Christ in New Jerusalem. This is the day that we get to pick and choose who it is that we will serve. And no, it's not all right. It's not all right that you choose Christ today, but then you draw back to the things of the world. He says, follow me. Don't follow the world. Today, the pastor's afraid to tell the people that you shouldn't be listening to secular music. I'm not afraid. Amen? Because that which you let in your spirit will be the very things that you do. We are influenced by those things that we entertain. Isn't that right? Amen. Those things that you let in your spirit, they influence you. When God sent us out into the world, we're in the world and not of the world, we can be influenced by the world. Amen. Amen? Will you spend the most of your time 
is what impacts you. If you spend the most of your time in the word of God, then the word of God will be what impacts you. Amen. It will be what you live, what you apply to your life. But if you spend your time listening to nonsense, shoot them up. <laughs> All the women that you can get, when you listen to stuff like that, what do you want to do? You want all the women that you can get and you want to shoot them up. Amen? Isn't that right? It's true. But the word of God says one man, one husband, one wife. It don't say nothing about all the women you can get. Amen? That's not what the word of God says. It says meditate on the word of God day and night that I will keep your mind in perfect peace. You wonder why some of us are losing our mind today? Because we're not meditating on the word of God. Amen. There's gospel music that I don't consider to be gospel. Because if it don't have no word in it, amen, if the word of God is not in the music, it's not going to do my spirit any good. Amen. Amen. Secular is secular. Secular says it has nothing spiritual, nothing, nothing to do with religion or the things of God. Secular is worldly. So when we take those secular things and we allow them in our spirit and we begin to act that way or a spirit takes us over that wants to be like the world, we wonder why. You don't have to wonder why. Because in God's word, if you're in it, there's a prescription in his word on how we should live life daily. Pray without ceasing. Meditate on my word day and night. Amen. That your mind will be kept in perfect peace. We are to only give sound counsel. And the only way we can give sound counsel is through the word of God. But if you don't know the word of God, how can you share it? If God doesn't give you revelation about his word, how can you share it? How can you? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. There is a way that a man thinketh to be right. When I was shacking, I thought that it was all right. But I would have opened up my eyes in the devil's hell. It didn't matter how much times I paid. He go both. For we are not saved by our good deeds. We must be aligned and obedient to the word of God. Isn't that right? I could be good all day long, but if Jesus Christ is not my Savior, I will open up my eyes and find myself in the devil's hell. And I ask you today, will you follow Christ? Not the way you want to, because remember Cain? Don't have the spirit of Cain. Cain gave a sacrifice unto God, but the sacrifice that he gave was not what God prescribed. God prescribed the blood sacrifice. Cain gave what he killed from the ground. God will reject your sacrifice if it does not align with his word. And I ask you today, today, will you follow him? Will you take this great invitation and be a part of the great banquet? For he's coming back again. For the church without a spot and without a wrinkle. Will you follow him? Not your way. You can't pick and choose and have it your way. Amen? We can't do it that way. Hallelujah. No, we can't lay with James today and praise God on Monday. Amen. Amen. At some time, we have to get it right. Isn't that right? We can't lie still cheap on Tuesday and say we holy on Wednesday. At some point, we get it right because God gives us the grace to live a holy life. He gives us a grace that we will not sin before we sin. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So in the word of God today, there is an invitation to a great banquet. A banquet set forth by the Father, the servant that's calling us to come, the saying that all things are ready and all things is prepared. It's Jesus. And we found here in the world that those that was called to be a part of the banquet, that they made excuses on why they could not come. What is your excuse today? What excuse do you have why you can't serve the Lord 
and love him with all your heart, your soul, and your mind? What is your excuse? Before it used to be the young burying the old. Now the old is burying the young. So you can't believe that, oh, I got time to live this thing. I don't even know when my end will be. That's why I'm getting in my witness right now. Because I can step out the door. Something can happen. Whatever God deem fit. Amen. The good Lord giveth and the good Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Will you take this opportunity to come into the great banquet? Sup with him. Dine with Jesus. Or will you leave here with an, with an excuse on why you can't do it now? When the word of God says that those that rejected him, that the end would be that they will not get the kingdom of God. This banquet is an invitation to the kingdom. It's an invitation that you may live eternal life with Christ. That when heaven and earth pass away, that you will live in New Jerusalem. And after you receive the invitation to the banquet, he compels you to go out and share the word of God with others. I'm going to ask that you stand on your feet. This is a heaven and hell preacher teach today. Amen. Amen. Either you're going to choose life, Jesus Christ on his terms or you could choose death, hell, and the grave. Isn't that right? I'm happy to see my family here on today. You know, I ask my family to come nonstop. I don't, I don't get tired of asking. You know why? Because Jesus didn't get tired of chasing me. Amen? He didn't get tired of chasing me. He didn't get tired of chasing me. Sitting in the church, 